Hi, welcome to Ms. Richardson's U.S. History 5-Minute Lectures. This information will be U.S. Notes 4.19, Challenges to Conformity, Part 1. It includes any information that goes along with Section 4 on your Unit 4 study guide. Remember, use your study guide to help you take the notes, pause whenever you need to, rewind and rewatch if you need, and write down any questions you have. Let's go ahead and get started. While many Americans conformed to societal norms in the 1950s, many did not. Some were, unable to conform, some were unable to conform to typical American ideals, while others were unwilling to conform. We'll look at both of these groups through this set of notes and the next one as well. First, let's talk about those that were unable to conform to America's expectations. During this time period, Americans were fearful of the external threat of communism, but they were prosperous and successful at home. But what if you were one of the Americans who was not prosperous? Those Americans could not conform to society even if they wanted to, and there were actually a lot of them during this time. During the 1950s, the book The Other America was written and published. It revealed that one-fifth, or 20 percent, of all Americans were living below the poverty line. That's 35 million people. Half of those poor Americans were elderly, which means they were 65 years old or older, and many of those lived in rural areas or in the inner cities. In rural areas, as we've learned previously, people simply lacked resources to improve their lives. They could not afford to move. They lacked skills and education for better jobs. These people were stuck in the rural, often farming areas, and were stuck in poverty. In inner city areas, as suburbs grew, more and more prosperous Americans left the cities for suburbs. Those who remained, remained because they could not afford to move. As more people moved from the cities, that meant there was less tax money to maintain city amenities, even things like safety, security, police forces, fire departments, roads, those sorts of things. So those who were already poor in the city became even poorer and their lives became more difficult. So what caused these individuals to be unable to rise beyond poverty? Well, there are a few different factors. First, many were minorities. And as we know, minorities during this time period, the late 40s and 50s, were treated very differently, not given the same opportunities, and paid less. This caused hardships for many of them. In addition, the groups that had fought for better working conditions and better pay, the unions, were suddenly limited. For example, the largest union at the time, the AFL-CIO, was suspected of many by promo of promoting communism. Essentially, communism is sharing of everything, so in theory, and equality. Unions fought to gain equality for workers. Therefore, they must be communist. This lessened the influence of unions, which hurt workers. The areas of poverty also had a very few resources in place to help those po in poverty escape poverty. Housing assistance was limited. There actually wasn't even enough housing for people in a lot of these areas. Social security was limited, so it couldn't help the elderly, and other resources that people needed were either underfunded or unfunded. Those in poverty tended to stay there. So this group wished to conform to society, but simply was unable to do so. In the next set of notes, I'll tell you about the two groups that did not want to conform, teenagers and beatniks. So this is the end of US Notes 4.19. Let me know if you have any questions.